This question combines a high-yield factoid with knowledge of murmurs. Even if you look at these answer choices and you know which murmurs they're referring to, which of course is great, you might look at this vignette and be like, hmm, how the fuck does it relate to the murmurs we see though? So that's our factoid, okay? So we have this 22-year-old chick. She has a two-week history of extreme fatigue. Uh, she has heavy menses. We look at her vitals. Temperature is normal at 98.6. Fahrenheit heart rate, she's tacky at 100, okay? Respiratory rate, 16, normal range, 12 to 16 per minute. Uh, blood pressure, 120 and 80. And then we look, she's got low hemoglobin at 8 grams per deciliter, normal range, 12 to 17.5 in menstruating women, 13 to 17.5 in non-menstruating women and men. Hematocrit percentage at 24% low, should be 42% plus or minus 5 in menstruating women, 47% plus or minus 5 in non-menstruating women and men. Hematocrit percentage is usually three times greater than hemoglobin in grams per deciliter. If you're wondering how these two numbers relate, it's not mandatory that that is the relationship, but it often is on USMLE questions. White blood cells, normal at 7,000 per microliter. The range is 4 to 11,000. Platelets, normal at 200,000 per microliter. Normal range, 150 to 450,000 per microliter. We look at this smear. It's showing us RBCs with central pallor. This is consistent with iron deficiency anemia, secondary to her heavy menses, which is common in menstruating women. So she has severe anemia, okay, this low hemoglobin. Why does she have a high heart rate? It's because of the low oxygenation of the blood. So heart rate goes up to compensate in order to pump more oxygen around the blood, it's sympathetic activation. So this high heart rate is going to cause a transient flow murmur. It's a functional murmur, meaning that when the heart rate comes back down, the murmur goes away. This is common in any situation where there's low oxygenation. Could be carbon monoxide poisoning by all means, okay? But anemia is a favorite USMLE cause of high heart rate. And also it should be noted that infections that result in a high heart rate can also cause a transient flow murmur, okay? So those are the three scenarios usually in US simile. Anemia could be CO poisoning and infections uh, causing a transient flow murmur. So we're gonna look at our answer choices here. We see the numbering system. I'll just briefly run through this. Uh, one on six is super inaudible, very faint. Colloquially, colloquially, we say cardiologist only, okay? Very difficult to hear. Two on six, very faint with a, st with a stethoscope. Three on six, loud with a stethoscope. Four on six, not only is it loud with a stethoscope, but there's also a palpable thrill or heave. A thrill is a palpable murmur. A heave is a general impulse of the chest wall moving outwardly, often from a strong underlying murmur. Five on six is you have a murmur that you can hear with just the rim of your stethoscope. Six on six is you can hear the murmur without your stethoscope. That, that's usually mechanical valves. You'll be performing uh, an examination. You can just hear the, the clicking of the mechanical valve. So we look at our answer choices here. Choice A, one on six, holosystolic murmur, fourth intercostal space, left midclavicular line. Wrong fucking answer. That refers to mitral regurgitation. Holo and pan are the same thing. Mid and crescendo, decrescendo are the same thing. Mitral regurg is a holo or pan systolic murmur, and this is the mitral location. Vignette need not say that it uh, radiates to the axilla, okay? But this is our classic mitral regurgitation, and no reason we can see it in this patient. We could do a long cardio discussion with every little bit of detail as far as everything we see with these murmurs. I'm going to stay concise. Choice B. Two on six holosystolic murmur left at the lower left sternal border. Also wrong answer. This refers to a ventricular septal defect. Okay, so it's going to be pan or holosystolic, and uh, this can usually be four on six. I, I wrote it as two on six, but you'll see often four on six. It's it, VSD tends to be a loud murmur. Uh, I just tended I just tend to observe it through USMLE questions. Um, choice C. Two on six, mid systolic murmur, second intercostal space, right sternal border. This is our correct answer. So, flow murmurs, transient murmurs, or functional murmurs often sound like aortic stenosis, okay? So, aortic stenosis, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, HACM, and flow murmurs uh, will have this mid systolic 
okay, this mid-systolic auscultation at the secondary costal space right central bore, the aortic location. And as we said, when the heart rate comes back down, the murmur will go away. These flow murmurs are more common in pediatrics. And when you do 2CK pediatric forms, you'll see flow murmurs, especially in some of the newer forms. Okay, just going to run through some of these other answer choices, some high yield points for you here. Uh, choice D, obviously wrong answers now. Three on six, two and fro murmur at the left and right sternal borders. Two and fro murmur is another way of saying continuous machinery like murmur or pan systolic, pan diastolic. This refers to our patent ductus arteriosus or PDA. Now, why am I why am I writing this here? Is this even really high yield? It is. This is on NBME 6 for 2CK. There's a question that literally rides on you knowing to and fro refers to continuous machinery like murmur in, in order to answer the question correctly. Every fucking student says, what the fuck, when they see this question on the 2CK NBME. But that's how you learn to and fro is the same thing as a continuous machinery like murmur and pan systolic, pan diastolic. That's when it's going to be the answers for PDA. Uh, choice E, four on six, mid to late decrescendo diastolic murmur refers to mitral stenosis, okay? Obviously, mitral stenosis can present with an opening snap. It usually does. I have seen two CK forms where it doesn't present with an opening snap, but uh, we're going to have our, our, mid, our mid diastole classically opening snap followed by a decrescendo mid to late diastolic murmur. It's a rumble, diastolic rumble. That's our mitral stenosis, uh, not our answer here. Uh, loud P2. This is pul this is pulmonary hypertension. So this could be a long, complicated discussion. What I can say is that, of course, the S2 is going to be an A2 and a P2 component. So when pressure is high distal to the valve, i.e., in this case, pulmonary artery hypertension, the valve is going to slam shut. Okay. So if the U.S. Simile, if the vignette mentions a loud pulmonic component of S2 or a loud P2. What they mean to say is pulmonary hypertension. Long discussion. I'm going to just keep staying concise here. Last answer, paradoxical splitting of S2. So we have A2 occur before P2. And so aortic valve closes slightly before the pulmonic valve. And the more pressure we have within one of the ventricles, the later the respective valve is going to close. So for instance, if we have right ventricular hypertrophy, if we have high right ventricular pressure, the pulmonic valve will close later. So we have A2 before P2, P2 closes later, therefore we have wide splitting of S2, okay? Sometimes if left ventricular pressure is so high where A2 closes really fucking late, we can actually have it where it closes so late that it, it does so on the opposite side of P2. That's called paradoxical splitting, okay? So paradoxical splitting means left ventricular hypertrophy, all right? That's what this is referring to. Fixed splitting of S2, that's going to be atrial septal defect. I've made lots of other questions uh, where I go into discussion of uh, gr in greater detail of the cardio stuff, but your short recapitulation here is flow murmurs, tra they're transient murmur that can occur with increased heart rate. Classically sounds like aortic stenosis or Hockham. It's going to be a mid systolic murmur at the upper right sternal border classically. Uh, severe anemia and carbon monoxide poisoning, infections, those are the probably the three highest yield uh, causes of your uh, transient flow murmur. Okay, that's it. If you liked this question, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.